Hey everybody, so it's that time. It's time for me to wrap up my February reading. I know it's a little bit late in the month for that, but that doesn't mean I don't have an amazing, amazing stack of books to tell you all about. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Um, as you can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm pushing through. Um, the rain left for a couple days and now it's coming back, so it's just still wet and soggy here in Northern California which is fine. I can't complain. It's led to a lot of really good reading. Um, but yeah, I'm ready for some consistent sunshine. Let's say that. Um, as always, I am ready also to make your TBR explode. So let's get started. Get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please get these books from your local independent bookstore, or if you're a library user, get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible. Okay, so we're um, as I am doing this year, I'm actually starting with my favorite read of the month, and for the month of February, that was Mame by Jessica George. This is out from St. Martin's Press. I want to thank St. Martin's for sending me this beautiful, beautiful finished copy. It was really my favorite read of the month. So this is the story of a young woman her family had immigrated from Ghana to the UK. Um, we meet her at the start of the story. She is taking care of her father by herself in a home. Uh, he is suffering from Parkinson's. Her mother is back in Ghana running a, I want to say like a hotel or a hostel left to her. Um, she has some help from a caregiver, but really her life revolves around two things, her job and uh, her father. That sort of stopped her from really having a big friend circle. It's really stopped her from having any sort of relationship relationships, romantic um, at all. Um, she is working in an industry where she's like an executive assistant. She wants to be in publishing um, and it's a, she's in a very toxic work environment. Her boss is dealing with her own mental health issues and it sort of causes her um, it doesn't sort of, it causes her to lose her job eventually. And um, her mom is going to come home and there's like this idea of her finally moving out. She's like 25 and moving out and experiencing life. And that's what the story becomes. It becomes sort of like this, this uh, coming of age story, finding yourself and finding yourself outside the expectations set by you. But for you by others. Does that make sense? So she's fighting against all of these ideas of, of, of what she should be. Her mom is always talking about why is she unmarried. She's getting older. She's losing that. Um, and she's just really trying to figure out what she wants in life. She winds up getting a job at a small publishing company. She tries relationships and, it, and friendships and the complications of all of that. Um, it is beautifully written. It is a debut novel that reads with such an assured hand. Um, the main character... Mame is just so like and even like this nickname that she has like the sort of the evolution of her ownership of it throughout the novel is so well told I don't know I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed the characters I really enjoyed the growth of the main character and I just thought it was beautiful so that's Mame by Jessica George this is out from St. Martin's Press okay um, next is a book where I actually got to go see the author. He was, had a author stop here in the Bay Area, and that is uh, We Should Not Be Friends by Will Schwalbe. I have I uh, hauled this book, and I told you all I'm a huge Will Schwalbe fan. I just think he is just a natural storyteller. I've read all three of his books, and this is the story of a friendship between him and a guy he meets at a, in a secret society. It's not so secret if someone writes a book about it, right? Uh, at Yale University. And it's sort of like a group of people that are thrown together from all different walks of lives. And they have to sort of get to know each other. And the story of their friendship, uh, Will's friendship with, um, <coughs> excuse me, Maxie, um, throughout time, through years, through decades, from college all the way until now. Um, I did listen to this as an audiobook while I read it. You know that is one of my favorite things to do. Will reads it. It is well done. It is just, it's just a great story. He's just such a good storyteller. I recommend all of his books. But if you're looking for just something to sort of, it's sort of like, I don't know, like your friend just telling 
you a story about their whole life. And it's just so good. It's so good. So that's We Should Not Be Friends by Will Schwalbe. This is out from Knopf and you can get your hands on it right now. And I went and saw him at Rakeshaw Books in Danville. So if you are in that area, I know they probably have some signed copies if you are looking for those. Oh, maybe some signed copies of his other books too. Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about is my sci-fi read of the month, and that was The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. This is the first in a duology. I thought it was a trilogy, but I've been told a number of times now that it is actually a duology. Um, this book took me a minute to get into because it is a little bit more complicated than I was used to, but basically what we have is um, an invasion is coming into New York City, and up because of that, are born three five people are like sort of infused with the spirits of the different boroughs of new york so you have manhattan you have the bronx you have um brooklyn you have um staten island i believe and there's one more i can't remember i am sorry um but those five boroughs come to have to come together in order to wake the spirit of all new york in order to fight this invasion that's coming from another dimension um I actually think I did a pretty good job of summarizing that. The beginning of it did take me a few moments to sort of piece it together. But you meet all of these different sort of godlike iterations and a little bit about them and sort of how they represent their part of New York and how they work together or don't work together and all of that. I, by about a quarter of the way, the pages were turning. I was totally bought in. The conflict is interesting. The world building actually makes much more sense as the book goes along. Um, I'm really excited to read book two. I really, really enjoyed this, um, but it did take me a moment. Being honest, if you're going to start it, don't give up because it does come together after a couple of chapters, okay? So that's The City We Became by N.K. Jemison, and this is out from Orbit, and I need to get my hand on book two. I do, I just don't have it yet. So I'm really afraid um, that all these books are going to fall over by me. A book that came out this month that I think was the first read of the month for me is User by Colin um, Winnett, and this is out from uh, Soft Skull Press. Um, I have now read uh, three books by Colin, and he writes some weird books, and I love every minute of it. So this book starts with a man who's, who is receiving death threats through the mail. And it starts sort of of this idea of who is sending these, should he be scared of them, but then it becomes so much more than that. You find out that he works for a tech company that created this sort of VR world. He created a certain section of it, I think it's called Ghost Lover, yes. And it's sort of getting attacked for a few different things. One, for its authenticity. Two, for this idea that people feel like they are closing down or not allowing everyone to utilize the system as they want, sort of a freedom of speech thing. And what we learn is that this, all of these pieces, sort of like the attack on his work, these death threats, it all start to affect everything about him. So his married life, his relationship with his children, his work life, and he decides that he's gonna create something new. That is all I'm gonna say. I need people to read this book so that they can DM me, email me, and we can talk about it. It's crazy in the best of ways. Um, you will turn the pages going, what the heck is Colin gonna think of next? Um, I absolutely loved it. I still don't know if I understand all of it, but it was a reading experience I will not forget. So that is User by Colin Winnett. This is out from Soft Skull Press, and you can get your hands on it right now. I know he's doing some touring stuff too, so you may be able to see him around as well. Okay, so I am going to save one book. I'm going to do two, um, a graphic novel and a YA book, and then I, I have a book at the end, y'all, so be ready, okay? I also did get a chance to read Nick and Charlie, a Heartstopper novella by Alice Oseman. This is out from Scholastic, I think, here in the U.S., um, from what I understand, yes, yeah, Scholastic, from what I understand, this may actually have been um, predated the novellas, I'm sorry, the graphic novels that we are all so much in love with. But this is just, you know, another chapter in the story and the, lo the life and the relationship of Nick and Charlie. I liked this a lot. It doesn't quite connect on all the levels as I'm used to. And I think it may be because I'm so invested in what I know from the graphic novels. But this is a story about a picture, uh, sort of a snapshot of their uh, relationship. It deals with sort of insecure excuse me, insecurity and jealousy um, and all of that. But in the end, it is charming and lovely. And just, Alison, she just writes stuff that just sort of hits you in the heart. I do love 
that on the cover he's reading another one of her books. I just think that is so fun. Um, so that's Nick and Charlie, a Heartstopper novella by Alison Oseman. This is out from Scholastic. Okay, and then I did read a good old graphic novel called Chef Kiss. This is by Jarrett Melendez, Donica Bryan, Hank Jones, and Hassan Atzman Alahwe, and I'm sorry, Hassan, I am totally butchering your last name there. And this is out from, who did this one? I'm gonna make sure I open it and give them credit. An Omnipress publication. So this is adorable. So this is about a guy who's graduated from college trying to figure out what he wants to do. Um, he's got an English major. He always thought he would be a writer, go into publishing, but the only job he can wind up getting is that of a um, sous chef in a restaurant. And he winds up having to go through these tests in order to become a permanent employee. There's um, like this romantic tension with one of the other chefs in the room. It's about friendship and how friendship can be derailed when people start to focus on themselves sometimes. But the forgiveness that comes from that. And it is, it's just absolutely adorable. There's a, the cutest darn pig in it. It is it is so charming. I absolutely loved it. So this is Chef Kiss, um, again, by Jarrett Melendez, uh, Danica Bryan, Hank Jones, and Hassan Otsman Aloha. I'm sorry. I'm going to hold Hassan's last name up there. I am butchering it. I apologize. Loved it. We'll read more by them. I want to see what comes next. Absolutely. Okay. So last but not least, um, Ryan and I had read a Colleen Hoover book. Uh, and did a video on it. And if you haven't checked it out, it's it's there. Go see what we had to say. So we were going to read another one. And I did. Um, and Ryan started and is struggling to finish. So I read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. So in a nutshell, this is about a woman who moves from San Diego to San Francisco to get her master's in nursing. She winds up moving into a, an apartment in San Francisco with her brother, who is a pilot. Um, her dad was a pilot, too. And she winds up meeting this man who lives across the hall, who is also a pilot. Um, and basically, they create, they start a relationship. But he is very upfront in the beginning that he will never be able to fall in love with her, never have a future. It's only going to be physical. She agrees because, of course, the physical is good and she likes him, right? And we flash back in time to sort of learn about his life. His name is Miles, I think. And sort of what brought him to this point where he won't allow himself to fall in love anymore. And then you flash back to the current times. All I will say, and you know what, um, people who are hopeless romantics, I, I'm going to say, you know, women identifying um, people this man treats her terribly and that she keeps going back and at the end is sort of okay with how he treats her makes no sense in my hand. He is horrible, horrible. I did not understand why she was fascinated with him. After a while, he has just treated her so poorly that I'm like, walk away. I mean, there have to be better people in the world for you. I did not find it romantic. Um, there is a lot of SEX in this book. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was fine, but like it did not drive the story in any sort of way other than it's so good, I'll allow myself to be treated terribly. I don't know. It didn't work for me. It appears that I am not a Colleen Hoover person. Again, I give all props to her, her success. I want wish her absolutely the best. I don't get it. I don't get it. So Ugly Love did not work for me. Um, and in the end, I was just like, there can't be, maybe there are people that like to be treated terribly to a point where then they fall in love. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's not like one of those things where she leaves and becomes stronger. She just sticks around and waits and hopes and then it seems like it's over and then it's not. Oh, you know, I have thoughts. That's Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Sorry, it just didn't do it for me. So that was what I read this month. So hopefully I can stack these. It's not too big of a stack. Um, and I highly, highly recommend everything but the last one in this list. I really, really loved um, those f f starting books, so I hope you pick all of them up. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I cannot do this without you. Um, I hope I was able to plug through with even feeling like this. I was hoping I sold you on these books. If you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe. I really, really love to talk about books. I do. And as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everybody.